Hello, it's Helen Gordon here and I just thought you might like to see how I am quilting these new designs that I call brush stroke birds. There's three blocks of Australian birds in a different style than I normally would design. These are more what I call brush stroke where the black areas I've left behind really look like expressive brush strokes. This is of course painted but the black in this situation is actually just the black fabric where I haven't painted so those brush strokes actually haven't been painted. But anyway I thought you might like to see how I do the quilting on these. This is the galah with the hibiscus. Now in this design, hopefully you can see that this is uh, like the inside of the galah's wing. So we're seeing some of his pink feathers. But the way I've designed these, each of the individual areas become quite an abstract shape. Like that shape there, for instance, is part of the flower, but it's also perhaps a leaf. Okay, so there's different ways you can interpret these. You can actually quilt that as a leaf, quilt that as part of the flower, or quilt that as part of the feathers of the galah's body. So it's really a bit more of an interpretive kind of quilting where you can be literal and describe feathers with feathers or be quite abstract with your choice of quilting. So if you are doing this in applique, what I suggest is that you applique onto black fabric and these are wide gaps that you are leaving in the black fabric. Applique here, applique here, but there's a space in between with no applique. And that's where the black will come through the design, a bit like a stained glass piece or what some people call shattered glass. Now look at the difference those curved lines make to the shape of that leaf rather than being flat lines. Just that slight curve now gives it dimension. I'm actually going to leave this side plain because it's very busy here. So now you've got a nice contrast of busy and plain as far as the quilting goes. But for his chest, I've got some different ideas. I really want this part of the bird to stand out and be quite dominant because really the, the feature areas of this block is the hibiscus and beautiful pink feathers. Now you can see here that sometimes I just stitched right over the top of that section rather than stopping. And I can because it's black on black and you really can't see it. In that way I can keep that smooth flowing line continuing. And you can also, I hope, see how important it was that that be a curve to show off the rounded body of that bird rather than it being straight. I'm going to come back in now and do that little bit up there on his cheek. There we go, that's the little galah. And now he's got his feathers on top here. And again, you can see those lines there that just go and hit the edge imply that that keeps going, that the feathers go around the curve of his head. I'm pretty happy with that. Now on the hibiscus, I would like to emphasize this stamen part. So I think I'm gonna come over here and echo that. This is my concept of melding, where I'm going parallel to this shape here, but in my mind I know I have to somehow get those lines to gradually transition to that shape. So 
So I've decided on a grid pattern and I'm going to finish that in a minute. But I just wanted to explain that when you have got organic flowing shapes, which is kind of dictated to by the fact I've got a bird and a flower here, when there's an opportunity for a nice contrast, I'm going to take it. So I'm doing a very regular grid, orderly, traditional pattern to sit in behind these more free form kind of designs. Now this is a slight variation on my normal cathedral windows. Normally for cathedral windows I would have you draw this grid with a marker of some kind that's going to disappear later but in this instant I'm actually going to keep those lines as part of the design. But now I'm going to come in here and do my cathedral windows. One thing I hope you can see is quite important though, when you've got a small space, don't think you have to complete a whole little arc there. It's obviously only going to be half the arc. And it's those teeny little differences that make that look like it is behind the elements in the foreground, which is what we want. We want this to sink back. And there we have our first block of our brush stroke birds. That's the galah with the hibiscus. I just love the way that now looks. It just brings it to life. There's so much detail and interest there. Very happy with that. Now I need to move on to the next one, which is our Eastern Rosella. I'm about to quilt the second block of my brush stroke birds set of three. And this is the Eastern Rosella, very colourful bird with the yellow chest and the green and the reds and then his blue wings. I have ditch stitched this piece, which means I have ditched in all those black areas. I'm going to start over here on this wing. I'll share with you my thought process right now. When I often quilt birds, I want the line of quilting to emphasize the shape of their head, the way that the feathers come out on their forehead and come down, and that's really what gives them their character. Now that little design does a couple of things for me. It gives me that spiral shape for the cheek of the bird. It emphasizes the idea of feathers again, and it's a very fine detailed design so it makes your eye zoom in here. You see the bird's eye and then the whole thing makes sense. So on this wing, I have the same colours as up here, the dark blue, the green and the jade. So I need to treat those areas similar to the stitching I did there to make the two link up as being, you know, one and the same. So 
So now for the background of this bird, I'm wanting to do beautiful flowing lines in something that I call contour stippling. So it's a very oversized stipple that I then repeat and exaggerate. I'll move into an area with a bit more space so you can see. So now I'm going to go parallel to it, but I'm going to go close then wide, close then wide. So once I've decided that this area, they're going to be wide apart and this area is close, I continue with that process. And then I have to try and help this look like it joins up and continues. My plan is to leave the leaves Plain. I might give them a centre vein, but I think if the background's going to be so busy, I think just having those plain leaves there might just be a, a welcome relief. Rather than launching into this area, I need to keep working on a previous area and let it come down rather than start here and try to make it join back up over there, if that makes sense. And I like how that echoes the wing. Now I'm doing the same cathedral windows as I did in the last block because I really like how it looked but this time I've made that grid on the diagonal. Now I couldn't talk to you while I was stitching that because there was so much concentration happening. So otherwise a really good idea would have been to draw that on there first just to get the grid going but otherwise you now treat it the same as the other cathedral windows it's just that the grid is on a diagonal. So there we have it, that's our Eastern Rosella. I think I will just put that one row of stitching down the middle here. And if you're like me and that row where I went off target, if that's annoying you, like it is me, <laughs> off camera, I will unpick that. So the alternative is just to fill that in with black Sharpie and then it's gone. In fact, that's what I'm gonna do, okay? Much easier. Okay, one more block to go, let's have a look at it. So here we have my final block, the two cockatoos with the oleander here, and this is block three of my brushstroke bird series. Now, as you've seen in the other ones, I have ditch stitched around the edge, and now it's time to fill in with all the patterning. The trick here is going to be that there are two white birds, but I still wanna differentiate this bird from this one. Even though some of their lines and shapes kind of meld together, I still want that to be distinctly different from that. So in this case, I'm not gonna treat 
the two birds in the same style of stitching. There we go, I've managed to treat those birds with very similar designs, but luckily, because I've got these breaks here that sort of separate the two, so even though the stitching here is the same as here, it's sort of broken up by that pink section with the straight and whatever I'm gonna do in the blue. But I still have this section here that I see as the back bird's wing, and that section there, which is the bird's wing. Not so sure I'm as happy with that as I could be. I think it would have been better if I had not had the zigzags but doubled up the lines so there was twice as many. It wouldn't have been as busy, but that's okay. You can choose to quilt as I quilt or to make up your own completely and improve on what I've started here. Now for the flower here, the oleander, I want to try and bring all these different bits and pieces together as one. So I'm gonna quilt and ignore the different sections to bring it together so you see it as a flower because I even kind of lost the fact that that's a petal okay that's the continuation of a petal so let's see what we can do I do like the way that the yellow sections here sort of repeat the cocky's comb. I'm happy with that. I do like how that's working. So this section here is actually the continuation of that bird's body. And I see this shape here as emphasizing the wing of that bird. So I'm wondering if I should do stitching in here that helps be his wing and stitching in here that helps be his body. So to be his body, I want some curved shapes. I think I want to continue that leaf because I want that to look as if it's one shape. Now we've got some pretty busy areas here of quilting so I'm just going to go for something super simple for the background here and we're just going to stipple. There's always a place for a good old stipple. 
This section here really is the continuation of his wings. So I'm going to continue these lines. I am going to turn that job around because I've got way too much quilt in my lap and I need to put it up on the table there just to make it easier. So even though the design's upside down for you, you can see what I'm doing. So you can see I wanted to keep that super simple here as everything else is so busy. And you know what, I think I'm gonna repeat that over there just to bring the two together. Because it doesn't need any more patterning. There's a plenty of patterning and we want your eye to see the beak, see the eye and then see the bird. There we go, we have our cockatoos with Oleander. Our eastern rosella flying with the eucalyptus leaves and the galah with the hibiscus. So those three block designs are available at helengodden.com and they are called brush stroke birds and there's three blocks in that set which you can see that you could enlarge to be cushions, to be bag panels or to be the centre of a much larger quilt. You could do anything with them with paint, with applique, with embroidery, with ink tents, pencils, it's endless. So there you go, brush stroke birds. Hope you enjoyed that. Education and inspiration from helengodden.com.